Hello, and welcome to the Squeaky Bum Time Podcast with Mike and Laurent. We are growing in leaps and bounds, and you better believe it. It's Friday, December 17th. In this episode, City Annihilate, Smash Leads, a legend, tearful goodbye. Chelsea sputter again and again and again. But first, Mike, are Spurs in the Premier League anymore? And is no. anyone going to play? <laughs> no, they're not. Um, they now what have got, three what, games you have in seven hand. games in hand? Yeah, but that's the thing. They, they don't keep – they're not even dropping in the table, which is sort yeah, of fun. Which is amazing. <laughs> they're staying right where they are. They're three, I think we said four. this – I think you said this on Tuesday. So we, let's just run it back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But now they've got another game. It's actually staggering to look at the table and see games played 14 for them, whereas everybody else is either 16 or 17. So yeah. um, we think that they're going to play Liverpool this weekend. Um, word is, is that they were cleared to play on Thursday oh, okay. and Leicester was not. Ah, I see. I see. Um, so it does seem uh, plausible that they're going to be ready for Liverpool this weekend. And when they I say ready, could, I mean physically the league- could seriously just cancel the weekend. Also a possibility. They very much could. I think they're, we're down to two games on Saturday. Um, and let's talk a little bit about that because I don't want to. Uh, you yeah, don't want I, to. Can I do the scores? Go uh, Whatever ones we have, and then we'll talk about what the hell is actually going on here. All right. We're going to run through it. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Bing, bang, boom. Bang. First, Geneva Bing Gerard bang. defeats Aston Villa. Uh, Steven Gerard's Aston Villa defeats Norwich. Two, zero two Norwich are terrible. Great goal by Ramsey. I think we talked about it yes, yesterday. Then after that, Manchester City put a fucking ass whooping on Leeds. It was incredible. It was amazing. By the way, little note: City do this every week. Just this week, the goals went in. Then Wednesday, two two Palace Southampton. The return of JWP with a killer mm-hmm. goal. Two amazing yeah. goals. But but Palace. Really working together. Jordan Ayew scores his first goal in 75 games. He'd been working hard. I watched their games. He just can't score. Then Brighton falls apart. No atmosphere. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. Wolves beats them 1-0. That was a terrible game. The less talked about it, the better. Then Mike believes in West Ham. But Arsenal is stronger. They get it done. Versus the Hammers. Uh, I, I watched this game. Martinelli. We liked him. We love him. He's exciting. Can he stay on the field? That's There's a also question. a lot of Aubameyang stuff. The less talked about it, the better. It's narrative. It's bullshit. Today, 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 Chelsea dropped points to Everton. Everton has nobody. They're playing 12 years old. They're playing people off the street. They're playing white guys with bad haircuts that are from Liverpool. Everton, go into Stamford Bridge and get the draw. Incredible stuff. Mason Mount misses more times than he'd like to admit, even though he did score a goal his fourth in a row. Liverpool go down 1-0 to Newcastle from Voldemort, John Joe Shelby, in the only goal he ever scores. It's the same goal. It's the same one. Outside of the box, top bins, nobody moves. It's incredible. John Joe Shelby seems amazing. Then he's at fault for two other goals. Very Shelby. <laughs> Liverpool Very Shelby. wins. Very Shelby. Going Salah, away. Salah scores again. Uh, Jota scores again. I'm not worried for Liverpool. They're the best team and have the best 11 in the world. It's looking more and more and more like Liverpool City like two years ago. Mike, you had something to say about COVID. Yeah. That was the scores. We wrap it up. Go. So we only have a few games this weekend. In fact, if I were to look at the matches right now, we have lost a United game. Um, to, and by the way, they would have lost that game to Brentford. To Brentford, yeah. No that, doubt they would have been jazzed. Night game. Um, in Brentford, forget about that. It. Would have been one of our best bets of the week for sure. But so now uh, a We've normal match it, week, way, right? A normal match week has ten games. Yeah. Uh, and we sit here, and as you're listening to this, it's Friday morning. There are five currently on the schedule. Uh, there is one in the in the the ten o'clock time slot in the east east coast, which is the three o'clock slot. Mm-hmm. Um, the the traditional nightish the evening game, mm-hmm. and then three on Sunday. And, and, and Tottenham Liverpool, as of now, is one of them. And it does sound like that that will go on, which is great. Um, but as we get through this festive period, or we, we, we kind of are still in the beginning of it, we're struggling with, with, yet again, the same things that we've been struggling with for the better part of the last two years. It's awful. It sucks. You're seeing it in every sport. You're seeing it in the NHL. Uh, you're seeing it to a lesser extent in the NFL. But um, NFL doesn't it, give a fuck. Well, so that's sort of the point that I want to hit on is yeah. <laughs> that is that there are different ways to do this. There are different ways to deal with it. And I'm not going I'm not going to sit here and say this is right and this is wrong. No. What I want to talk about is I want to shine a light on how the English Premier League is working on things, how the NHL 
and how the NBA are doing things. And, and as a microcosm of the NHL, Canada, because tonight the Montreal Canadiens hosted the Philadelphia Flyers with no fans. Again, again, we're all the way back. I thought back they to went this. to 50%. No, that's the Maple Leafs and Senators. In Quebec, ah. they went to zero, straight to zero. Right, because they it's a federal, they have states. Sure, provinces, whatever. But the point is, is that um, there's a Stockholm syndrome here that has taken hold. And our comfort blanket is actually fear itself. Now, I'm not going to get into, you know, again, what's inherently right or inherently wrong, because this if anybody doesn't think that this is a whole hell of a lot of gray area, well, then you're being ridiculous. It but is a lot of gray area. It's in, it's in almost entirely gray. But the way that the NBA handles things and the way that the NHL handles things, and I'll start with that because I don't have an entirely good grasp on the Premier League, but based on the outbreaks and the clusters, if you will, per team, I have an idea. And I have an idea that it's similar to the NHL. Um, the NBA only tests players who are vaccinated once a week or once a month. I'm not entirely – I can't remember exactly, but the point is that it's not – you're not shoving something in your nose every fucking day, right? <laughs> um, the NHL, quite the contrary. In fact, this evening uh, for the Colorado Avalanche game, their starting goaltender was scheduled to play. In warmups, he was taken off the ice. Now he doesn't have any symptoms. He's not sick. He's he's but but he is what they call asymptomatic. He has tested positive. Therefore, he must be taken away immediately. And, and not take it away, but you know what I mean? He's, he's ineligible to play. Another player, uh, a defenseman, Jack Johnson, uh, who ironically stinks, um, former Ranger, he was waiting on the results of a second test so that if he could get a second negative test, he would be eligible to play. Now, he, he, he skated in the morning. He practiced with the team. He's been around the team. The problem I have, and when I get back to this Stockholm Syndrome piece, is that we are so – vigilant and and we're looking for reasons to disqualify reasons to be overly overly cautious and and that's why i go back to the nba where it's like all right you guys did the thing that we told you to do we're not going to penalize you right isn't that what we were told the whole time so um i get the feeling that the premier league is much more like the nhl in the yeah. sense that they're testing all of the time. Now, it needs to be said that we – how many times do we lament international breaks, right? We have people shotgun spraying all over the fucking world to yeah. the point where if there's a Petri dish, it's it's England, right? Yeah. Like, I, you know? I, I find it – I think the difficult thing is is like nobody knows. There's clearly some risk we have to take. There is not a clear stated like – some countries are trying to go zero. Some countries are accepting risk. Some countries are like whatever. Some states within the same country are. Some cities are different from other cities. Like California just went masks in the office. I'm like, you're okay? Yeah. You know, sure. yeah. and, and I think the bigger, the larger issue is, and, and it might go outside of sports, is when you discredit, and we have essentially discredited our institutions, everything becomes on the table, right? Yeah. You said don't wear masks. Now you're saying wear masks. You said if I get vaxxed, I don't have to wear a mask. But now I have to wear a mask. Now, I understand it's science. It's moving. Things change. Blah, 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 blah. But people aren't smart enough to change the narrative of the first thing they hear. So, <laughs> so they, right. you said this, and then you changed it, so you fucked me. Uh, the, the other one is the disconnect of like, oh, the Premier League can play. The stadium's full. No one's wearing a mask. But if three players get it, we have to shut down the game or we have nine players. Like, I understand the protocols and the rules and whatever. But if you go on the field and you take a test before the game and you're ready to go, you're ready to go. Just go. Well, the, I, I don't think know. I don't, I look I don't at know. It. I just want them to play and I don't want to lock down and I don't want no fans. And please don't do that. That's all oh, I gosh. care about. The less we talk about it, Well, the and better. it's hard because this is the best time of the year. To yeah. be a Premier League supporter, I have a buddy of mine who I was talking to today, and he's yeah, like, as long Day as is the best, as long as I get, yeah, as long as I get the week before between Christmas and New Year's, because I'm gonna go on a bender like you've never seen, and I'm yeah, just gonna get. He, go, he literally told me he goes, "I'm gonna go to the pub." He actually lives in LA. 
I'm yeah. going to go to the pub and I'm going to get shit faced every day between 12 and five. And I'm just going to watch soccer. He doesn't even like the premier league that much. And yeah. he loves this. Okay. So this is yeah. the reach that this festive period, if you will, has. Because yeah, all um, the other leagues are done. This was their right. last weekend. Aside from the fact that they run their fucking players into the ground, which is another topic entirely. We don't care about that. No, but it's Honestly. but it's it's the it's arguably the most valuable time for the Premier League, and so the yeah. way that they're doing this, the way that they're governing it's this Super Bowl this, week, this right, but it's the way that they're governing this legitimate crisis that we have. I understand. Yeah. I'm not I'm not belittling at all. It is so inherently British because it's so devoid of an accountant. It's yeah. devoid of somebody being like, whoa, 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 whoa. If ever there was a time for a little bit of restraint, it's right now. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, there was. I mean, I listened to Robbie Earl and Robbie Musto. Robbie, they were conflicted. Uh, Robbie Earl was like, "Shut down the games. Come back on on Boxing Day. Just don't take any chances." I don't think that's going to make a difference. Uh, we've come play. all the way back. We've yeah. come all the way back to yeah, two weeks go. to stop the spread. Yeah, it's bullshit. Like, come on. What are we talking about? Come like, on. we have treatment. Like, who cares? Let's play. I want to talk about fucking Everton and well, Chelsea. Wait. So one more, <laughs> and and that's. Why wouldn't we just, again, going similarly to like the NBA, don't keep looking for trouble, right? Yeah. If you are sick, if you have symptoms, if you don't feel well, if you are questions, or if you're just a hypochondriac or on the team or whatever, then sure. Okay. But to mandate, and 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 to be clear, I want to be very clear. I don't know that this is exactly what they're doing, but it feels an awful lot like but They it. don't and mandate in England. Like some teams – have only like 50% player vaccination. No, no, no. Well, the vaccinations is is, is another topic entirely. I'm talking about the tests, right? Oh, I don't know about they, that. They, it almost feels like they are inherently like, like daily testing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're testing all the time. No doubt about that. Yeah, no doubt about that. Now you're looking for trouble, right? Yeah. And so if you have a reason to have a test, then by all means, let's get, let's make sure we understand what's going on here. And even if you've quote unquote in, been around people and, and 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 potentially infected other people, all right, that's that's an issue. Let's make sure that we have an understanding of what the situation is. I'm never I'm never in the camp of saying, oh my god, well fuck it, you know. Right? I, the problem is that each camp, by the way, and there are only two. There is no, despite the fact that it's mostly gray area, is completely to your point discrediting everything the other side is saying in pursuit of their truth, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, and and, then, and the other thing is like I shared it with you. There's a real risk of something weird for young men. That oh, shit's real. And and listen, I, I don't. <laughs> I, I didn't I know, couldn't, but now I, I do. I'm like, wait a minute, something weird's happening. I couldn't agree more, and I don't even want to get into that whole thing. Yeah, and I'm gonna get into it because City say goodbye. Oh well, that's right. That's a good segue. To Sergio then, Aguero, who yes. I'm assuming was vaccinated. And out of the blue, he's he's been injured. I mean, City let him go appropriately. He's broken down, right? He has knee yeah, injuries. Yeah, I mean, he's broken down, injuries. but he was going to do the Messi thing, do the Barcelona thing. He's A month ago, he's on the pitch. He grabs his heart like, I can't breathe. Al, you know, 33 years old, the, one of the fittest guys you've ever seen yep. physically, like running-wise. And we find out he's got some heart arrhythmia that he didn't have for fucking 18 years. Yeah. And now his heart's fucked up. I don't know what that means. I don't know where it came from. All I'm saying is and we're projecting. If, I, if I were a high-end fraction of a percent of athletes in the world where I run on the perfectness of my body, I would not fuck with that thing, even if it drives people crazy. Or I would and just be like, I'm getting insurance. If something fucking happens to me, I want my money today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because this is it. This is my. This is how I make money for exactly. my generational, right? Yeah. Like, do you think Cristiano's got that fucking vaccine? Hell, fucking no. <laughs> he has other. He has other diseases away. from all the hookers he's had sex with. I was gonna say Cristiano's got a melting pot of. of by the way, of, he's having another set of twins. This is now like his seventh children. Good. We need all of the genes. All the Ronaldos. The <laughs> Get just. We all dream of a team of Ronaldos, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. So um, no, absolutely. We, we've covered awesome. all the non-stuff stuff. I mean, Aguero means a lot yeah, to me. I yeah. cried. I showed Lisa. Um, I, he, I can't get past the Aguero goal. I've watched it five times in the last hour. Uh, I watch it regularly. 
It makes me have goosebumps every time. It's the greatest moment in sports, and we can argue about it. It's the greatest moment in sports for me. It was the Rangers in 94, and then it became, and then Boone, and then 86 Mets. But it's definitely Aguero for me. And then, you know, I think anytime he played Spurs was great because he fucking lit you guys uh, up. Except for from the penalty spot. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was one. That You know what? All the other games didn't matter. Right? Yeah. That that right, one right. miss saved. So no, all, so okay. my favorite, you can now love him forever. Didn't my Sergio Aguero <laughs> memories are missing the penalty at White Hart Lane in the first leg. And then everybody remembers him being offside in the 95th minute. That's my favorite Sergio Aguero memory. Mine is the but, is the VS Boas five goal game when you oh guys god were, he when you guys are playing like he, a high line Lindsay without Newell. pressing. Yeah, that was, that was not good. That was not good. <laughs> oh AVB. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, right. I mean, look, I mean, it's right. I, I I told you, you know, in our little chat, like I was sad that he got to he did his press conference. I was sad that he didn't do it the day before a city home game. And, and then walk video. out at halftime and get the whole love in. And I'm sure he will at some point. They'll give him a statue. They've got the company statue. They've got the Silva statue. They need him to Aguero have a statue. Aguero will get a statue. It's going to I just – that's the sort of thing where like, yeah, I know. He went to Barcelona and whatever, fine. Because he wanted yeah. to continue his career, which is yeah, but they would understandable. Have, he probably would have stayed. But <laughs> City was like – Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> nonetheless, the fact that he didn't, he didn't get – to go out on his own terms is always tragic, yeah. right? Yeah. But um, the fact that he, like after a year, he would have signed like a one day contract with City or some shit and come back and done the whole thing, right? And so he didn't get that moment. And and I feel He did for him. score two goals in his final game for City. He did, he did. And then he didn't even miss a penalty on that one too for the hat trick? Maybe, who knows? It doesn't matter. I don't, I don't it doesn't matter. He anyway, one of the, let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's get to our season. Let's get on and, to the uh, on-field and, conversations. And, and Chelsea blowing it. I mean, they completely first half, completely dominate Everton. Yep. Mason Mount playing the false nine that's been going around. It's Pulisic Mounts have uh, uh, Ziyech. Mason Mount has six shots on target, four on goal, misses the first three, scores one in the 70th minute. He looks like he's been scoring goals. He should have had three more. I think Chelsea and City have the same problem. Actually, no, they don't. They don't have the same problem. But they Chelsea, that first month is now gone where they were clinical. Now they just can't score goals. Well, hold on. And 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 speaking of the theme of the show, we do need to say that Chelsea were missing Lukaku, Werner, Hudson Odoi, and Chilwell. Um, and Havertz, Havertz is well, but they all tested po positive and Havertz is quote unquote unwell. Now he played and he, he played quite well from what I could tell. Mm. Um, but I mean, look, even a team with the depth of Chelsea, if you're going to take those four players out of the lineup, that's going to leave a little bit of a mark. You've, you've got attacking talent on attacking talent. I understand. Dude, uh, and they, they should have, they should have gotten three. I mean, they, they got gotten three. 10 shots on target Mount in and of himself should have scored three. But they didn't. It was nil-nil at halftime. And Benitez gonna Benitez. Everton, whatever the whatever the lineup is, it's it's a five-four-one. They're not even fucking around. They're sending a guy named Ellis Sims, a 21-year-old who's ne who's never had a first team appearance. They're sending um Jared Braithwaite, who I've never heard of. You know, the legendary John Joe Kenny. I don't know where England comes up with John Joes, but there's one too many. Because uh, <laughs> we'll talk about John Joe Shelby later, um, and they just rally the troops. I don't. They they, they on the bench. They have two, two goalkeepers because they don't have enough players, and they get the draw. Benitez gets a legendary performance out of Everton, who while they don't have many shots on many shots, they do have three on target and one score. So yeah. second half, they do have a couple of things on the break, and good for Everton. Good for fucking regressing to the mean again. Conte didn't play. And Chelsea didn't have a clean sheet. I sent a theme here, and they are sputtering, having a having only won two of their last five with yeah, two draws and a loss team. in between. So, so they are slipping, slipping, slipping. This is this is again, all right. And I said this about the West Ham match. I said it about the Zenit match, um, which was a difficult play for them, right? Mm. Uh, in the last game of the Champions League group, champions find ways to win these games. Uh, and they many other teams that find ways to not draw or lose, right? To not win them, essentially. Mm. City or Liverpool, that's the difference. That is the quintessential difference in the table right now. 
is that City or Liverpool gets three points out of this game from Everton and Chelsea gets one. Now, yeah. this is all this means, and I, I, f- I feel like I sound like a broken record, but oh, we talk about the same things that we? Chelsea is n- just not at it as far as the championship caliber in the Premier League. Now, that's that not doesn't an insult. mean they're incredible. It just means that Liverpool and City. That, are that's what I'm saying. That's sick. they are not on that level, and it's that's not really to tough. take anything away from Chelsea. It's really um, tough. It's like, but yeah, I, I, they're, I, they're, who, who, look, look similarity. It's like kind of like late '90s, early 2000s Red Sox Yankees. Like the A's were good. They should have won a title, but they were not the Yankees and the and the Red Sox. No, they and they were never going to beat them ever. Or the twins, right? Those were good teams that made the playoffs every year. And they just were like, yeah, no, I can't with these guys. This is a good segue (laughs) into Arsenal West Ham, but they are Chelsea are four points behind City now. Yeah. And they are eight points ahead of Arsenal. But watching everything sort of unfold, they feel like they're closer to Arsenal than they are to City, don't they? No, I I don't I don't agree with that. I just I feel like they are I think um Tuchel is either in the lab or trying to figure it out I think that he's got to get Lukaku into that lineup and whether he likes it or not his season is going to hinge on whether he can get Lukaku to score 10 more goals this year right because if he can't they're not they're not challenging if he can, then they can ride out some of these games. I do understand they, they weren't really prolific even with Lukaku, but I think Lukaku is the answer to his scoring problems because as a, as a City fan who has these midfielders who buzz around and take shots and you feel good about it and we can segue into City just annihilating leads, there's a different mentality in a attacking midfielder than a fucking... Um, striker who scores goals strikers who score goals don't care about the score they only score care about scoring and midfielders who play only care about scoring pretty goals not and and not just scoring goals right they're not maniacal they're not crazy you need that ronaldo that kobe bryant that kind of like killer tom brady like we're scoring we're running up the score we're gonna kill you and midfielders mentality is not that strikers mentality is I will destroy you. We're up 4-1. I haven't scored. I'm scoring the fifth. Yeah. And City don't have that. Aguero had it in a very chill way. Uh, Thierry Henry had it. I want to kill you. I'm scoring. I'm going to rip your heart out. He fucking hated himself. Like, whenever you hear Henry talk about his dad and how he was trained, it was never good enough. And you could see it. He he played with rage. Like, I fucking hate myself that I missed that. And if you're a good striker, that's how you should be. Right, Ronaldo's pissed every time he misses one. Ronaldo's Whereas pissed the city every guys time he get the ball. Yeah, right. Exactly. The city players with all the seven midfielders, nobody's pissed off. But I do. We sort of give short shrift to shit city, and I do have to call out two players aside from Bernardo Silva. One is Bill Foden. Well, whatever. Rodri has been incredible. He's thinner. He's faster. All of a sudden, remember I used to say he turned like a battleship. He yeah. somehow has become a frigate and just turns. He has now, after three years, taken the Fernandinho role. I feel safe with him there. He kicks ass. He's big. He needs to stop tucking his fucking shirt into his pants for him to be cool. (laughs) But until that time comes, he's killer right now. So he's incredible. He gets a shout out. Kevin De Bruyne in this game, remember I've said, oh, the, the, the Grealish buy was because I think De Bruyne's finished. De Bruyne is not finished. He literally looks five pounds lighter and was moving like a fucking deer. All of a sudden, the ginger ninja returned. He moved fast. His his shots all had power. He was incredible this game. His two goals were th- both thunder cunts that could have destroyed and ripped off someone's head. He didn't even aim them. He shot them so hard that Melier just was like, I, I'm not getting this. It's it. <laughs> and, and City just romp scoring... Foden, Grealish, De Bruyne, Mares on a Mares is is cheap. It's deflection barely moves. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne again. John Stones who gets three chances and miss, and then Ake uh, coming out of the woodwork uh, because all the good players after the big scores came up got taken off. So Diaz got taken off <laughs> at halftime. Uh, Bernardo got taken off for for Gundogan. 
Uh, I was surprised know. that they let De Bruyne play a full 90. I get that he needs the he minutes. Needs but he needs to. He needs, he needs to. the minutes, but he's also like, wouldn't you be afraid of like him banging, getting hurt? No, no, he was fine. And the thing is, I did go back and rewatch this game. Leeds weren't... So, Leeds were in the wrong places, but they were running. It's not like they weren't giving effort. They just oh, were they in the wrong are. place, and City just like... Oh, they always are. I've never seen more runs out of defense than, than in this game. Like they, because they're man marking, they would just run through the field. So guys would run away and, and, and either Rodri or Diaz would just, just keep going, run through the whole middle of the field. Cause they're following their guys. They're like Fernand uh, Silva's not going to get us. We're going to man mark him. Okay. City's so good that they can just be like, okay, well, John Stones is just going to take the ball and run to the 18 yard box. Yeah. And uh, the less talked about Leeds. Leeds are in trouble. Bielsa's going to have to get this team back together. We've seen with Southampton, when teams get beat like this, it can take time to recover. Mm -hmm. And they are in trouble. Uh, another big thing for this is if this league title is going to be close, City needed these goals because they pull yeah. closer to Liverpool. Only two goal differences behind. I think it'll go down to the wire again. It'll go down to the head-to-head. -head. It'll go down to what happens during the African Cup of Nations. I wouldn't put it past Liverpool to not lose any of those games. It's easy. They're good. Well, not only that, I, I think that that's now in flux, if not probably off the table. You think they're um, not going to go? I don't think they're going to go. I don't think they have any choice. Um, and, and, the, players and, and may, the players may just want to go. That, and, and that's possible. But what will happen, and, and it's actually very similar again to what the NHL is currently dealing with with the Olympics, um, where there's a... I would go to fucking Beijing if you paid me. I, I just... That aside. <laughs> that aside. We're actually... And if if they don't go, we won't get to see the greatest Canadian hockey player since Wayne Gretzky play for Canada until he's 29, by the way, which is Connor a crime. David. Connor McDavid. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's similar to the point where... They're going to need a five-week uh, quarantine period, from what I understand. Oh, right. Two to go and two to come back. Yeah. And so, it, like, there's a couple of angles you can play there. But, of course, the teams don't want to lose them he, he, for that, here's, here's basically. The thing, here's the thing that's really annoying about the COVID stuff. There's different rules for different people. It's okay. Are you fucking 30% obese? You're fucking quarantining because you might die. Are you old? Yeah. Are you young and one of the top 5% of athletes in the world? In the You're world. fucking fine. Yeah. Like, just let the people who are healthy and in a healthy cohort live. They'll be fine. Yeah. Like, we're not all, I'm sorry, we're not all fucking equal. They're in the Premier League. They're special. It's Mo Goddamn Salah. People sing songs about him. Nobody sings anything about fucking Mike Salerno. Actually, we do. You That's actually not shit, true. Mike Salerno. I was going to say, there's a few people. <laughs> Friend of the show, Andy, uh, my friends in Hartford, Connecticut, have a song about me drinking everybody's beer at the bar. So, so actually, you're very wrong that there are okay. many people. There, okay, there's no songs about me. <laughs> there are no songs about Laurent Cortez. Because I don't have a good name for singing it. It's too many syllables. It's yeah. French. It's awful. It sucks. So, um, you know... I, I do, I do, I do wish that one day I'd get a song, and I hope that you and you and Charlie will work. We'll figure that. it out. We'll work uh, on it. But, but you know, so so I do want to go. You know, after talking about City killing Leeds, pressures back on Liverpool. They play today. They have no problem at Newcastle. The controversy in this one, and I hate this rule because it's not on the players. It's clash of heads. Uh, uh, players down for Newcastle takes a shot. Uh, Jota takes a shot, takes another shot after the save. The guy's still on the ground. Goal goes in. Liverpool are not fucking obliged to stop the game. Sorry. There's no sportsmanship. I was going to say, the only way, the only way to handle this and, and on a global scale is to say, sorry. Right? Yeah. But the problem becomes, guys and this is where we, we got so far away from things now where everybody's an actor. If... If the event happens where it's like, hey, that guy's got a fucking serious head injury, right? I, I don't see many scenarios unless it's literally right in the thick of the play, like on a corner kick or something, um, where you can't continue the play and administer whatever if, if it's that urgent, right? Like 
I don't, I don't see how that is so required, but in doing so and saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now you've got, like I said, everybody's an actor and everybody's, I don't don't begrudge Liverpool. The referee's there to adjudicate these things. If he sees a guy on the ground, blow the fucking whistle. Okay. Or don't. Or don't, and they didn't. And he penalize that behavior, and that behavior will stop happening. Well, they didn't do it. It's not in the rules. You, the player is allowed to play on. Jota yep. scores a goal. Then Mane scores one later. Liverpool pull away. It's really not a problem. What was interesting about this game was Thiago was awful. He gave mm-hmm. away a couple of really tough chances. Uh, did give up a goal to John Joe Shelby. Basically just gave it to him. <laughs> and yeah. then Shelby went into his little spot. Hammers at home. Allison didn't move. Incredible stuff there. But Liverpool keep pace. We know about Chelsea drawing. There's really not another team even sniffing it. And that takes us into this fake battle for the top four with our faux pretenders, Arsenal, who are technically in fourth place currently the, currently with the spot. three games in hand. <laughs> yeah. And two games in hand over, over Man United. We both expect United will get this spot. but. Stranger things have happened. Oh, most uh, certainly. United are getting a new coach with new ideas who's never coached at this level. And Tottenham have Conte, who is a, if nothing, an improver of teams. Yes. And so that's where you take, if you were to take the names associated with these teams away and you look at what they actually are. They're close. Yes, but 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 Spurs and United have the most upside because we don't know enough about what they are. The problem is that we know exactly what Arsenal is. The problem is that West Ham keep shouting from the rooftops, this is who we actually are, and yeah. we won't listen to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wolves are – they're not up They're for not it. there. They're not up for it. They can't Leicester see. is is – frankly, they're just a shell of who they used to be at this point. And now you're all the way at mid-table. So, yeah. so but the, the news on Leicester is people are starting to be like, they need a good goalkeeper. It's starting to happen. I said it a month ago. I'm only using public fucking data. Why do I know this? And these idiot pundits, they literally don't look at shit. Like, I'm convinced that these pundits don't know that FB refs exists. Like, because I'm seeing whole YouTube channels that are dedicated to taking the free and available data and making scatterplot graphs and doing a 10-minute video about it. I'm like, it's in the fucking website. Yeah. I, I made one of these. If I was... They literally do a whole video on the difference between expected goals and goals for all players under 23. I'm like, yeah, it's a fucking graph. You can do it in Excel. It takes five minutes. Yeah. But they got 10 minutes of content out of it. They, it's funny. They do a whole thing. I could have told you that. Leicester are giving up you too have, many goals. You have told yeah. us that. Leicester are giving up too many goals and Wolves can't score because Jimenez cracked his skull open and is not the same player and Traore can't shoot water, can't shoot fish in a barrel, water on the side of a barn. I don't know. I'm getting them all mixed up. Couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat is actually my favorite of the Uh analogies. What's the barn one? Can't hit the side of a barn. Couldn't hit the side of a barn. These fucking hillbillies and their goddamn sayings. (laughs) (laughs) So so that happens. Uh, Interesting stuff in in both those games where, you know, Arsenal – do get the win. They do beat West Ham. Um, the first half was poor. Oh, oh, they battered them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they bat. I mean, West Ham was bad. Yeah. The first half was pretty bad, but then there was a bad yellow red combo for Kufal. Kufal. Martinelli yeah. put them ahead. Lacazette misses the penalty, but the Kufal foul was literally the most controversial you could see. It's a tackle in the box. He hits the ball, his ankle rolls over the ball, and he kicks uh, Lacazette in the leg. He got the ball, it rolling over the ball, over the ball is like is like over the shirt, kind of, well, it's under the shirt. It's under the shirt. It's under the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the ball hey, is under, it's over the shirt, which is fine. But Neil it was co- it controversial, and the issue is, I think, that VAR, this is what it's for, and and I think that not going to look is what gives you the problem, right? Like, yeah, this is a classic. The ref should make the call. He made the call that it was a penalty, but he should have at least looked. 
And that's where it gets tricky. Like, when do you look? When do you do it? Ba, 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 ba. Whatever the case was, you've seen them given. I'm okay. I don't want VAR, so fuck VAR. If it's a red, it's a red. Fine. That's fine with me. Uh, it was close enough that he should have been sent off. That was that. Game was over at that point. And, you know, Arsenal beat a team at their level because I think fundamentally when two teams are close, the style is going to take them over the line. And I think at this point with Lacazette and Odegaard, they really were able to flood the midfield, drop off the front line and make it really work. Mm -hmm. Ramsdale made a huge save that saved them. Uh, Mikel Antonio, since he went to Jamaica, man, he's never come he's, back. No, he hasn't. <laughs> He scored six games, six goals in the first four games, or six and six, and hasn't scored since. But he's always been sort of an annoyingly streaky player. So well, he gets hurt, and he and plays, that's, and that's what I mean is that yeah. he's yeah, and and when he's on form, he's great. But for, frankly, nobody in that West Ham team looks like anything right now. So yeah, they're not I, I getting mean, anything extra to lay it at his feet. I, I I'm much more concerned with where Declan Rice and Thomas Suchek have gone. I think the, um, the other issue is is like. It's Dawson, it's Issa Diop, right. and it's Masuaku. Their right. entire back line is different. Yeah, there's so no Zuma that's... and there's no um, uh, yeah. Cresswell, which yeah. were big misses. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I looked at that lineup and I I thought, boy, West Ham plus 260 sounds spicy. <laughs> and I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, it, no, it's shout out to our, uh, our buddy BJ, big fan of the pod. Yeah. Um, he and I did some uh, some gambling this week. We uh, we did correctly call Villa, um, and which didn't feel that difficult. Um, yeah, but I right. did think that there was a Dean Smith angle to it. We talked about it on the preview, mm -hmm. um, and I threw in City because I was like they're gonna beat the shit out of them. So that was good. Uh, and then I lost it right back on West Ham, um, and I lost a little extra because I went back in on West Ham at halftime. So yeah, that's fun. Yeah, um, so, so so we'll we'll touch on we'll touch on this sort of round out of the games that's following up. We talked about Villa. I'm in love with Steven Gerrard. I think the charisma is over the charts. They get a good win uh, against Norwich. Norwich deserved to lose this game. They just defensively don't get into players. Literally, Ramsey runs through the hole of Norwich, scores an amazing goal. He literally said in his interview, I want to be like Steven Gerrard. I mean, oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 20 years old. I want to be like our coach, Steven Gerrard. And then Ollie Watkins uh, put Villa up on a tap-in, but it was good movement. Ollie Watkins, a man in demand. Arsenal? Mm. Could he go to Arsenal? Could he Ooh, go to City? Like that. Somebody, he's not staying at Villa. Now, the question is, would Villa sell him for no reason? Probably not. But is he seventy? If someone came to him with for seventy million dollars, would they yes. sell him Watkins? Absolutely, fucking lootly, they would sell him Watkins. Yeah. But he's the kind of player that I think is really good. I think there's a couple of good English strikers. Um, I I thought this while I was watching Chelsea Englishness. I think they're missing my 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 special intangible. I mean, I guess Rudiger has it. Maybe Rudiger has Germanness. So. Rudiger definitely has part of it, but I don't know. I, I'm. Uh, I don't know. Something's missing. Mount is the only English player on that team. Wow, well, Reese James is English. Sorry, right, Reese James. Yeah, see, there you go. You didn't even think of him as English. Mm hmm. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Well, uh, well Loftus Cheek played, but he's not. In, he's not. Uh, he he plays about. Jorginho he, is positively feminine. <laughs> well, well, the thing is with Loftus Cheek, he's six foot three, and he plays like he's tiny and then yeah. you have Conte who plays like he's a monster and all right so here's where it is too Chilwell is has he's in a he's got a finesse version of the Englishness relative to Alonzo who just drives around drunk all the time right yeah, that's literally know. a metaphor for not him just being a murderer but his his out he kill someone driving well. yeah oh okay yeah uh, no, he uh he he killed a girl drunk driving uh, going like 70 and a 30 or something like that, and then oh. paid a fine and walked away from it. That's actually oh, okay. what happened. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Speaking of just paying a fine and walking away, uh, Wolves won Brighton nil. I'm walking away from Brighton. I, oh, I, no. Oh, no. I just, they're not, they got nothing sparkly. Mope couldn't play because he was in the nefarious gray zone of protocol. So, you know, without the without the the, the bum, the bum toucher and bum 
Bandit. Bum, the bum wiper. Bum wiping bandit. There you go. Yeah. Wolves get there. I mean, Wolves have a really, really good defense. Uh, Brighton are back to their XG winning ways without winning. And then Palace, Southampton was probably the best game of the of the week. Yeah. Really fun. Oh, wait a minute. Crowd was loud. Uh, Borgia scored a really nice goal after a mistake from our new Lord and Savior, uh, Connor Gallagher. Gallagher. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Palace get a good draw after a really good win, but uh, it doesn't feel like any of those teams is going to kick on out of that group. You know, you kind of get the feeling that Palace, Brentford, Brighton, Everton, Southampton, Leeds are kind of one group, and then there's bottom four, Watford, Burnley, Newcastle, Norwich, will just kind of fight fight it out to the death. Although Leeds taking that seven puts them on that minus could, 15, yeah. which hurts their tiebreakers mm -hmm. because Burnley's got two games in hand, so they'll probably get one win out of two. Right. So let's go back. Let's go back to Brighton for a second. Uh huh. Because I'm not letting you quit on them just yet. The reason <laughs> now they've zero wins in the last five, they got three points from five games. Um, they have eight draws in 11. Yeah. That's not um, fun. They're really, really, they have not thin. won a game since September 22nd. Okay, fine. But listen, they're just. <laughs> They're extremely, extremely thin. And Lewis Dunk missing the game for five yellow cards didn't help either with the suspension. <laughs> God, I love him. I love him. But, Lewis Dunk. He's my hero. You know, you're missing uh isn't Lamptey out, right? Let's see. Uh oh, they he, <laughs> no, Lamptey played. The problem is they had no center backs. Veltman, right. who's a Veltman, who's a winger, and Dan Byrne, who plays uh fullback with a center backs. Yeah, they had no center Lewis backs. Lewis Dunk, Shane Duffy. Yes, you know, they're all uh, gone. Basuma suspended again for less nefarious things. No, um, no, no. Basuma played. He oh, now he's suspended. Now he's suspended, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you had Mope out, Gross out. Right there, that's most of your attacking prowess. Yeah, and they need... They, you know, Trossard, they have, come on. Yeah, they like, just didn't have their guys. So here's They're the not thing. good we, enough to not have their players, right? That's what that's I'm saying, yeah. right? If you're talking about Brighton as the team that if they just had a striker, they'd be competing for the uh, European places, not necessarily the Champions League, then if they don't have their support, their active supporting cast, the players they do have, they're overperforming yeah. and can't finish, well, shit, then they're a relegation side, right? So that's kind of what we're seeing. And I, I, I don't believe that they're a bottom half team. I think that they're top half like you predicted as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, they're they're – they're up against it right now. They do have a game in hand on a lot of the teams in the league, which is good. But um, I mean, I just want them to get healthier faster. I want everybody to, obviously. But yeah, I mean, they they um, had they, so let, let's look at the draws, right? The draws, just from an XG perspective, they there's eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, there's nine draws. Out of those nine draws, they won the XG in one, two. Three of them. The Leeds game was the big one. Yeah. So they could have had three more wins, which would have put them. That's six know, points. That puts them in seventh place. Yeah. See, it's 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 that much difference, right? And and the, right. And, and everything changes, right? Yeah. And they could have easily gotten three more wins out of those games. Exactly. Like there's a million opportunities where those games could have been there. Now, you could probably do that for any team, but like yeah. eight draws is a fuck ton, right? Palace yeah. has eight. Southampton has eight. And to me, when I think about draws... It, it, it always is in the manner of the draw, right? Like, are you getting lucky and hanging on? In the case of Brighton, they're fighting and just not scoring the goals, and then they give up a late goal to, to blow it. I mean, they got a couple of a couple of good draws where they pulled one out of their ass, the Mope, the two for two for Mope there. So they're still only at minus three, but on 20 points. But like we said before, the whole the whole central middle of the league, that whole group of from eight to 14 is five points. <laughs> yeah so it's it's fluid the middle is big well, that's what i mean if if and there, i get it that their their suspended game or postponed game is against spurs so it's not necessarily a layup i wouldn't say it's a layup no right but if they were to have that three points and if we it, listen we can do this because we don't know we can pretend and we can assign points blindly assuming <laughs> games in hand yeah. if they win that game which yeah. is certainly in the realm of possibility they They're go in the group with all the other place ones. they go from 13th to 9th yeah. Just like that, and a point behind yeah. Wolves. For any of these, so, any of these, any of these yeah. teams in this pack go on a run. They push for Europe, 
And the thing is, is it goes all the way up to fourth place with Arsenal. Okay. Yep. You're seeing them, Jekyll and Hyde, West Ham, mostly Hyde these days. And now you're basically seeing everybody else go back and forth. And going back to the conversation before that we had, Man United and Tottenham have the biggest upside because we just don't know what they're going to look and feel like yet. And I said it a, a week or so ago, every day that Tottenham doesn't play is a day that they get to train or, or, or future down the line with Conte. They have more, basically more Conte. Right. Yeah. Well, they so, haven't been training. This is the part that sucks about the COVID. Uh, they're probably not, not necessarily, or they're, or they're faking it. Who knows what they're doing? Well, no, I'm not even saying that they are. Or they aren't. They get more time down the line. The training yeah. sessions before games matter more than the midweek training sessions where you're just fucking around, right? Uh, so, so that is what I mean. They're going to have more beneficial time further down the line this season because of the days and games missed during the most congested part of it, right? So. And that's kind of why I'm really, and I want to pivot to this weekend's games. I'm really interested in how they'll look against Liverpool. Um, do I expect anything? Fuck no, of course not. But if they're at home, it's going to be a prime time game. It's the what five thirty start on Sunday, the evening Sunday game. Um, I do think that they could show up. Um, here, here, here's the issue that they have, right? There, the 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 Tottenham backline cannot hang with no 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 it's gonna have to be it's gonna have to be like a heroic performance from davies no i don't believe that i think it's gonna be a heroic performance from the players who go win you football matches harry kane hyunmin's son right like they're gonna have to win a game three two or 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 two one i could say maybe well they can they're gonna play it like they're trying to win it one nil because they're gonna give up goals but they've got to score when they have, like, they have to do Mourinho style. Well, no, well, okay, sure, but, yeah, but they I mean, have to, in terms of in terms of clinical, they need to be Tottenham versus City that you fucking hate so much. Two chances, two shots on goals, two goals, right? Like shit, like that. They likely won't have uh, a lot of the ball, but they will have opportunities. I promise you that. So, yeah, sure. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, I I think it's it's one of these games they've got to take on a bit more Conte personality. Show and that's some my fight. point. Yeah. Is that this is realistically the first game that they'll be playing for for Conte in two full weeks? Granted, I'm not, and I'm not saying that they're completely rested. I think they're mostly rested, especially if they were ready to go on Thursday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, their last game was December fifth against Norwich, and uh, the just before that against Brentford, right? So they're coming off of two games with an aggregate score of five nil against opponents you should be beating, uh, and now you've got again. They've had more training time. Is everybody training that entire time? No, they're not. But they're they're soaking it in. They're getting more of the philosophy, more of, of the personality, like you said, right? They're going to embody that. And I do think at home, they have something to offer Liverpool. So they'll probably be huge underdogs this weekend. I have not looked at the line. Um but I would take a flyer on them. I think that I think that they could they could you know nick a result here. The other thing is that Liverpool are playing a game every three days also, right? Yeah, so they've been playing. They've been playing a lot. So yeah. I, I I, think you could, and says the homer, I get it. But I think that most teams go into the festive period going, if we have 10 games, we're not coming out with 30 points. We're not coming out with 27 points. For City and Liverpool, 27 points is not unrealistic at all, right? Yeah. Um, but I do think that you go, there's, there's going to be some landmines in here and we're going to step on them and we're going to grow as a team. We're going to get past them. This could be a landmine. God, you have, you, Tottenham has not gotten a result versus Liverpool since 2018. The game at Wembley, I think, where they basically no, ended two, the day two, on Leverage's career. 2-2 two, two at Anfield. Oh, that's the Wanyama game. Is that what that is? Yes, that was, that was the, the Wanyama game. game where we, tr- and the, and the late, the late penalty Liverpool, to Kane, Liverpool. where he yeah. had two penalties. You haven't you haven't beat them since since uh, let's see, the last win was at Wembley. You're right. In yeah, they shattered. They shattered. Uh, that was the first year Klopp was the coach, I believe, and it was hysterical. Right, I remember that game. It, it's Dayon it's Dayon Lavrin trying yeah. to header ball. You know, whatever. Yeah. The thing uh, that's yeah. the King, thing that's King Carver. The thing that's really fucking sad is half the players are still from that team. I know. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Sanchez is there. Winks is there. Son is there. Harry Kane is there. 
For yeah. Liverpool, they still had Salah, Firmino. Oh, they still had Coutinho. Emery, the whole midfield is new. I think that was before they sold him on like the transfer deadline, like early September. But anyway, um, uh, early August. Anyway, um, I, 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 I feel good about that game. I feel better than I should. And you know why? Because I haven't had to watch Tottenham in two weeks. That's why. <laughs> yeah, they haven't hurt your feelings. Yeah, you haven't been appalled by them. I just, I just afraid for Eric Dyer. He's just so shit. No, I'm, and I'm not. Again, first of all, I'm not here saying like, oh, I think no, Liverpool are comfortably the favorite and should be but i think there are reasons to kind of not look past spurs here reasons but we've got a couple other good games too well um, uh chelsea wolves the way chelsea are playing right now they're not scoring against wolves well the question is who's gonna play and because we said you know lukaku and hudson odoi and 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 uh they got Werner. enough players man that's chelsea they, do. they like here's what they could do come january be like we're bringing all the boys back in fuck it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, Crystal Palace, here's a million dollars for breaking the the, the, <laughs> yeah. the loan. That would be fucked up. They should not do that. That would be fucked up. But anyway, uh, Burnley, Aston Villa, the last wait. The so what's the deal battle. with what's the deal with Conte? I don't know. I don't know. He does not. He's, he's not listed as injured. Uh, maybe he's just getting back up to scratch. After I think he, maybe he had COVID. I don't know what the story is with Conte. Yeah, but you know he'll he'll be back hopefully. And I think you'll if he's back, they'll give a clean sheet. I think this is a chance for Wolves, Chelsea. Chelsea won't give up shit to Wolves because Wolves can't score, but Chelsea won't score against Wolves either. Uh, City play Manchester, play Newcastle. That is a game. If you want to go to my YouTube channel, you will see a man distraught and broken and destroyed from 2019 December. Uh, that is a game where the first three seconds of the video, I go, season's over. We just lost a league. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic post-game death moment. Uh, City had just lost two in a row. They were seven points behind Liverpool, and they came back. And that is the game January 3rd at the Etihad, the John Stones game. The John Stones game, yeah, off the line. Uh, I get talk about it. I get goosebumps, and I cried at my desk, and I was looking for people to hug, and nobody knew what happened because I was just working in a regular job. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was watching it. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> Leeds Arsenal is watchable because there's only so many, so few games. But, and same with, with Villa Burnley, we have another Claret and Blue clash. Okay. Um, I just, I'm if, bummed. The thing is, bummed Arsenal's going to beat games. Leeds. They're, they should. Yeah, this no, absolutely. Not, they should, they have the skills to beat Leeds, but Leeds are. Ch- they're tough. Yeah. I don't know. I, I still trust them, and I don't know why. I don't want to trust them. We've got two games on Saturday. I couldn't give a shit about either of them. <laughs> and it bothers me. It makes me sad, right? But, like, it, it makes me sad that not so much to bring the show all the way back around to the to the topic. It just – I'm bummed out that we're still here. And it I'm sucks. bummed out that, that, you know, there's so many different elements and variables to this. And we seem to have come all the way back to square one. I had seen Thomas Frank was saying, we need to just put a pin in this right now. And like, like I think you said, Robbie Musto said, let's stop the games for a week. No, don't and- just keep going because but it's, it's not going to help. It doesn't matter. Do we, do we really have selective memory that we can't remember March of 2020 when everybody was, whoa, 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 Hey, we have no fucking idea what's going on here. Let's stop 10 days, two weeks. I know. Yeah, it but sucks. now we know. We have people but aren't dying anymore. Like, but what no, are we it, doing? But, but Nina, do we really not remember when we all said, nope, 100%, that makes total sense. Okay, this is going to be shit, but let's take care of it, things first and yeah. then let's get back on the field and, and, and get it back on with our lives. Do we really not remember that? So we're literally having n- numerous. Talking, talking heads and 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 prominent figures, yeah. Going back around to this, and I, this is, I just, it bothers the shit out of me. And again, like you said, it is um, less of a threat for a couple of reasons. One, the majority of people in this world have some active defense at it, whether it be a vaccination, whether it be, uh, you know, Whatever antibodies or right or 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 or, or actual treatments to things yeah so it's discouraging to say the least and and i don't and i'm again i'm not sitting here trying to to build a fence and say get on one side of it i'm just sitting here saying we have 10 games a week and now we only have five and this this is a show about 
football. This is a show about fixtures. It's a show about on-field games and as, and, and, and the and, differences in cultures, right? And, World and so War as, II. I, as 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 I sit here in Florida and you in California, that's yeah, about as different as we can get right now, right? <laughs> And it's, yeah, it's I didn't know DeSantis was going to form a fascist guard. 20 states already have it. Yeah. Play baseball. Love it. Love it. <laughs> uh, well, happy birthday, Ar- Arkeem. Um, <laughs> let's get out of here before you get okay. us fucking canceled, will you? Yeah. That was amazing. That was the Squeaky Bum Time podcast with Mike Itzlerno and Laurent Cortines. We are the football wing of the Chop Sports Network. We record on Tuesdays and Fridays. We do not do anything in blackface. That was a joke. So be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you are listening on Apple or any other podcast platform, please rate and review the show because it really helps. Happy birthday, Arkeem. 